Nation, what's going on? You're watching the Raiders Report. Coming up here on today's show, we're going to get into some free agency rumors. And I know a lot of y'all have been asking me, Mitch, have you heard anything on the draft front since April is literally tomorrow? We're also going to be breaking down some draft rumors. And yes, there is a quarterback to keep in mind that Las Vegas could actually end up taking this year. When you look at the offseason as a whole, as it stands right now, and this is per... Uh, man, who's what's his name on Twitter? It's not important. The Raiders have 6.42 mil field yates. That's the name. 6.42 million, 25th overall in terms of overall salary cap space. When you look at the fact that they have only five picks in the 2022 NFL draft, a lot of people are like, well, what exactly does that mean for the Raiders right now? I don't know if they're going to go out and make any big time moves until the draft happens, but you can't forget that the Raiders are going to get about $20 million after June 1st since they let go of Corey Littleton and they let go of Carl Nassib. So depending on that, if some of these bigger name free agents are still available, then you could see the Raiders go ahead and pull the trigger. If you were to ask me, okay, Mitch, money isn't a factor, who would be the top five players that you think make the most sense for Las Vegas to go out and get? It'd be the Honey Badger, Stephon Gilmore, Calais Campbell, Bobby Wagner, and Kyle Van Noy. Speaking of Bobby Wagner, I don't know if this means that he's going to come to the Raiders. I would be very shocked if this ended up happening. But according to Richard Sherman, who played a long time next to Bobby Wagner with the Seattle Seahawks, apparently Sherman said big at B-Wags, which is Bobby Wagner. News coming soon. Stay tuned. I'll tell you this. I would be shocked if Wagner ends up coming to the Raiders. But if he does, we're going to be going live that I can guarantee you. So make sure you click that subscribe button. Make sure you turn on those notifications. That way you don't miss a thing. And if the Raiders go ahead and they make any kind of big time splash or if I think, wow, that's notable news enough, I'm going to make a video about it. That's my promise to you. You want a commitment to excellence? Then subscribe to the Raiders Report. In terms of the latest going on on the free agency front, I was talking to... Somebody the other day that said, you might not have heard this, but Demir Bird, he actually visited with Las Vegas, I believe it was just a day ago. And we know that the Raiders have been looking for a fast, wide receiver. You're looking for a potential field stretcher, a Deshaun Jackson, Henry Ruggs replacement. Bird's been in the NFL since 2015, and he ran a 4.2840 at his pro day. Now, sure, it's a pro day. But there's also been reports out there that he ran a 4.17. I don't buy that. Also, apparently the slowest time that he ran during the whole NFL draft process was a 4.38. I do know this. Bird had a handful of, we'll say, solid games last season. For the Chicago Bears, 26 catches, 329 yards. But you know what? Just a few years ago, Bird was one of the top receivers on the New England Patriots. He gives you special teams value, which means a lot for Josh McDaniels and could be a cheap option. So if it comes out that the Raiders go out and they sign Bird, I'm just going to sit up here and say, well, I told you so. If the Raiders are looking for other speedy free agent wide receivers, here are the names that jump out to me. And these are names that I personally would not want the Raiders to go ahead and break the bank for. Demir Bird, obviously the Raiders had Deshaun Jackson. He still wants to play. He's up there at 35 years old. Marquise Goodwin, Will Fuller, T.Y. Hilton. The name on here that's probably going to cost you the most money actually could be Will Fuller. He made $10 million last season. However, only caught the ball four times. If I go out and I sign somebody like Fuller, I want a very heavy incentivized style of deal. So when you look at it from top to bottom, the name that is the most likely is, in fact, Demir Bird. Now, as I am filming this video right now, I'm actually in about three hours from now going to be heading on over to Locals and going to be doing a live show, Raiders and Chill, where we talk about free agency, the draft, whatever you want. And I promised y'all, if we can get to 1,000 members on Locals and 69 supporters, you're going to get an extra live video. We're only 21 members away, which is 100% free. And supporters, you can do $10 a month or you can do $100 a year and get two free months. If that interests you, go to RaidersReport.Locals.com. That link is going to be available for you all in the comments and in the description of today's show. And when I usually go live on Locals, it's a very laid-back style, almost like a mailbag where you guys can throw in those questions and comments. I'm also a big craft beer guy, so I'm going to be reviewing the 1554 New Belgium. Hopefully it's not actually from that time because that is a long, long time ago. But New Belgium's, man, really good craft beer, and they 
not going to lie, they can kick your butt here and there. All right, y'all, so now what's going to be coming up here on the show is we've talked so much about free agency over the past few weeks, and I you know the Raiders don't have a first or a second round pick, and if you want to see a joke, I put my first and second round mock draft on Twitter and on Instagram at MitchellRents365. That doesn't mean, though, that Josh McDaniels, Dave Ziegler aren't doing their homework. Doesn't mean that they're not doing their due diligence on certain prospects. And remember, every single NFL team, you get 30 players that you can pick from to go ahead and have a visit with. And I'm going to go through a few names that the Raiders have decided to go ahead and take a visit with. I'm going to do my best to pronounce this name right. It's the defensive lineman from Minnesota, Isezi Otomo, who they've already gone ahead. They plan on visiting with him. He's played in 34 games with the Golden Gophers. He's had 81 tackles, 7.5 sacks, 13.5 tackles for loss. What you're looking for here is somebody who can be a defensive end, rotational 3-4 style. I'm going to say your Carl Nassib replacement, somebody who can also go ahead and play the role that Maybe some people think Malcolm Kuntz was going to be able to play. I see Kuntz being a more stand-up outside linebacker in a Patrick Graham system. But EC at 6'6", 285 pounds, he's long, he's lanky, probably going to be a day three pick. I see him going in the fifth, maybe the sixth round. Last season, though, 30 tackles, three sacks. Could be interesting since the Raiders don't have a sixth round pick, but they do have two fifths at 164 and at 165. Let's talk about the other player here that they have scheduled a top 30 visit with. It's Cordell Flott, and he's the cornerback from LSU, and he's not the one that is getting a lot of attention. Like Derek Stingley Jr. is the one getting a lot, a lot of hype. But in 29 games played with the Tigers, 98 tackles, five and a half tackles for loss, 10 pass breakups, two interceptions. Personally, if you want him to live up to the hype, you're hoping that he can get with some good coaching. And I would like to think that the Raiders right now, they have some solid coaches because he's still really thin. He needs to put on some muscle. He needs to get his technique down. But if you were to tell me, okay, someone who's 6'1", he's 165 pounds, he's thin. Put some meat on him. Put some good technique under him. He's got the athletic ability. You can see it on tape. Just needs to put a few other pieces. But another player that could be drafted in round five, Last time the Raiders drafted a cornerback in round five, Nate Hobbs. Yeah, I think that one worked out pretty well too. Now, the thing that's been getting the most attention around draft rumors comes from a quote from Josh McDaniels, and this is what he said yesterday. At the end of the day, what we like to do is get in a cycle where we find people that we bring in and can train and we can develop. This is, again, in regards to drafting a quarterback. A great thing for a quarterback is to have time in a system continue development year after year, not bring him in for one year, then sit there and say, all right, now I've got to do it again. That's a pain in the butt sometimes. So do you guys think after seeing that quote from Josh McDaniels that the Raiders are going to go ahead and draft a quarterback in 2022? I want you to go ahead and type D for draft. I want you to go ahead and type P for pass. And I'm going to give a few of my takes, and then I'm going to tell you a quarterback to keep your eyes on because there's been some rumors out there that the Raiders have their eyes on somebody. This is what I'm going to say. I wouldn't be shocked if Las Vegas decided to take a QB in the draft. It's not the route I personally would go since you only have five picks, and I'm not 100% sure the quarterback that sounds like that they might be interested in even ends up going in the draft. But however, even if Josh McDaniel's saying that, that doesn't mean that they don't like Carr. The amount of rumors over the past 72 hours that Josh McDaniels, the Raiders, they don't know if they like Carr. It's why the contract's been hung up. I'm sitting up here telling you right now, the Raiders are committed to D.C. It's why they went out and they traded for Devontae Adams. Derek Carr is going to be the starting quarterback week one for the Las Vegas Raiders. Guarantee it, the contract extension is going to happen. What I read from this is this. Josh McDaniels, Dave Ziegler, they play checkers when everyone else plays chess. They're smart guys up top. And the Patriots, one thing that they've always done was developed quarterbacks. Then they can trade them away. Jacoby Brissett, they drafted him in the third round. They traded him for a receiver. Yes, the receiver did not play well, but it was Philip Dorsett, who was a round one player, and they were hoping could get that overall value. Then you traded away Jimmy Garoppolo. You got a second round pick for him. If you're telling me right now the Raiders go ahead and they take a quarterback in the fifth, seventh round, let him learn behind Derek Carr. We see it year in and year out. Quarterbacks get traded for higher picks. I mean, look at this past offseason. If there's a team out there that's like, wow, we're a quarterback away, and quarterbacks have done a really good job developing underneath Josh McDaniels, why don't we give up a, a blank pick for somebody who you drafted late? 
That's what I think the Raiders are doing, and that's what I want Raider fans to do is to think about that plan, not, all right, the Raiders don't like Derek Carr because I'm telling you, they do like Derek Carr. Now, before I tell you that quarterback name that I could see them going out and keeping on the radar, remember, Raiders jerseys are available, and they are going very, very quickly. So if you want a Chandler Jones, Devontae Adams, we got you covered. Brian Edwards and Trevon Merrick, they switched up their numbers. Maybe you want a brand new jersey. The link that you see on screen is also going to be available for you all in the comments and in the description of today's show, chatsports.com slash Raiders jerseys. But they also have Josh Jacobs. I think his jersey number switch is coming up here soon. I think he's about to go to eight. And then also um, you got Derek Carr, Darren Waller, Hunter Renfro, all the stars for the Raiders and some of the legends as well available at the link that you see below, chatsports.com slash Raiders jerseys. All right, I've teased you long enough. The quarterback that I've been hearing the Raiders are interested in or could potentially draft is Cole Johnson, and he's the quarterback from James Madison, and a lot of y'all probably don't know about James Madison or even Cole Johnson, and the last time a quarterback got drafted from here was Ben DiNucci, went to the Cowboys. I'm going to tell you all this. Cole Johnson is much better technically sound than Danucci. He was the 2021 FCS Offensive Player of the Year. A personal NFL draft insider that I talked to said that he doesn't see Cole Johnson getting drafted. So there's a situation where you could potentially see the Raiders get somebody as a UDFA. But Johnson has a lot of big game experience. I'm still going to say if you're able to play in a championship game or get to the semifinals in the FCS, which... James Madison has done the past three years and they've lost in a national title like that's still getting some gameplay experience in terms of some of his numbers I didn't update them it's 41 touchdowns five interceptions was able to put up a good amount of yards but look at the height and the weight 6'5 245 so he's got that build that you're looking for in a quarterback prospect now the reason why that the NFL insider that I talked to said he doesn't think that Cole Johnson ends up getting drafted is because every year NFL.com, they, they have to make profiles. They have to make lists on players. And when you look at the top 15 quarterbacks on NFL.com, usually if you're not in that top 15, you don't get drafted. And I went back and I looked at the years, and it's very accurate. So here are your top five going to be signed or going to be drafted. Guaranteed all five might even have a chance going in the first round. One of my personal favorite quarterbacks, and you guys know, is Carson Strong, big-time arm, though I wouldn't draft him if I was the Raiders because I see him going in the top three rounds, and I'm not going to use my first pick on a quarterback. I like Bailey Zape, though his arm strength is not quite there. But again, all these quarterbacks, I don't know if I'm going to sit up here and say, I want Zape in the fifth round. Well, then when you go to the next five quarterbacks, E.J. Perry, Brock Purdy, Cole Kelly, Caleb Ellaby, Skylar Thompson, None of these dudes really jump off the page as well. So if I'm sitting up here saying, okay, I only have five picks that I can use as it stands right now in the 2022 NFL draft, I would rather the Raiders invest those in skill position players or players on the defensive side of the football. And then if you're like, okay, we're going to take a quarterback waiting for Cole Johnson, who I do not see being drafted, and then you go ahead and you take him as a UDFA. So what are your thoughts on all of that? How about this? Let's say the Raiders... They're going to take a quarterback. I'm telling you right now, we look into the crystal ball. You just don't know the name yet. Josh McDaniel says, all right, this is the guy we're going to go ahead and get. If the Raiders draft a quarterback, who should it be? Let me know down in the comments. One of my favorite prospects entering the 2022 NFL draft was Isaiah Likely. And I love the name. It's the tight end from Coastal Carolina. And the Raiders have actually already met with him. And he is a very, and I mean very competitive person. In 2020, he was playing through multiple injuries, and you could tell, and it's one of the reasons why all of his teammates respected him. He can block. He can catch the football. I've seen scouts throw out Delaney Walker comps. I've seen scouts say Ben Watson comps, but like Delaney Walker was 6'1", 245 pounds. Likely is 6'4", 240, at 59 grabs, 912 yards. Yes, he had a long of 99 last season and 12 touchdowns. For the Raiders, who are looking to go with two tight end sets, you have Darren Waller, you have Foss Moreau, but your other tight ends are more of just blockers. Likely can catch the football, so if you need to give Foster a breath, then you go ahead and you throw out Isaiah Likely there. Or if Waller wants too much money, or if you don't plan on bringing back Foss Moreau, then you go ahead and you draft a young rookie tight end who's got some athletic ability and he can block. However, he is in my top five of tight ends to go out and get. If you were to tell me Trey McBride were to be there at round three, pick 86, I'd be interested. 
But here are my top five tight ends entering the 2022 NFL Draft. Likely does make the list. McBride is my clear number one. Auden's there, and then Dulcich, and then Ruckert are definitely some names to keep in mind. But remember, the Raiders are going to have a lot of news. They're going to have a lot of rumors, and we're going to keep you up to date. To make sure that you don't miss anything, obviously hit that subscribe button. But with studio time here at Chat Sports, I always do my best to keep you up to date on Twitter and on Instagram at MitchellRent365. So if you made it this far in the video and you want to make sure you never miss anything, not only should you subscribe, hit me up on social media as well.